What's up everybody, welcome back to yet another the Spotlight video. Today I'm going to be breaking down the 2022 US Championships for the figure skating with ladies and men singles. I did the same thing a while ago for Skate Canada and Skate America for the Grand Prix series, so I'm back doing that now. I'm not going to be talking about Ice Dancer or Paris today because I'm not an Ice Dancer or a Paris skater and I really don't have much to say about that. I don't know much about it, so I can't really call what I see like I can call figure skating. So without further ado, let's get into that breakdown of nationals and the Olympic team. All right, first, let's start off with the women's, which was a crazy event. I thought I knew exactly what was going to happen. I thought I had my Olympic team planned, which kind of like what I anticipated happened, but not in the way that I thought it would. First off, we had two COVID cases, Alyssa Liu and Amber Glenn, though Amber Glenn posted on, well, they both posted on um, Instagram. Alyssa posted that she was feeling fine, she had no symptoms, she was kind of sad that she didn't get to do the long, she did end up skiing the short. Amber Glenn really didn't do that well in the short, and then she posted, lo and behold, I had tested positive for COVID and that's why I wasn't skiing very good, I was sluggish and slow. Which is awful, no one should wish COVID on anyone, even if it's, even if it's for a competition. But Amber Glenn getting COVID and Alyssa getting COVID and having to withdraw from the competition is crazy because they could have infected someone at the competition. Like when I first heard that, my first thought was, okay, everyone in the group of Alyssa is now potentially infected. So that was Karen Chen, Mariah Bell, Alyssa, Lindsay, um, everyone in that group, well, you know, counting them out of the race at this point now because they could have been infected. If you're infected, you're not going to go to the Olympics, obviously. And then I went on Instagram and saw that Amber Glenn had COVID as well. And now I'm like, okay, everyone in Amber Glenn's group might have had COVID, so f or got infected by COVID. So for a minute, I was like, this Olympic team or these champions, or the champions of the nationals, are going to be a bunch of juniors that just trans transitioned to a senior skater. So like Kate Wang, all those skaters that are you know newbies or unknown, haven't made their mark in skating yet at nationals, might come and win and be the Olympic team because everyone's going to be out with COVID at this point because that's two groups out of the three groups instead of COVID. It was crazy. We ended up just having um, Amber and Alyssa test positive for COVID. So COVID scares aside, this was still a crazy nationals for the women because of skaters like Isabu Levito, who just came, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that name wrong, but she just came in under the radar, no one knew who she was, and like placed top three, which is the perfect spot for her to be in because one, she's 14, so she can't go to the Olympics. So she's not wrapped up in the drama of being number one and being like oh why can't we send her just because of stupid age limit being in the drama of that with the olympic olympics coming up being a third gets her on everyone's map she's on the radar she made a podium she meddled but now she's not have a target on her back and she's not the one to be the defending champion next time around which is a great place for her to be in she came out skated beautifully she skates like a russian honestly if you know skating you know what i'm talking about like russians they have beautiful extensions and just the way that they use their toes specifically like toe picks it's like ballet on ice more so than it already is she skates like a russian that's not a bad thing it's not a good thing it's just kind of like a style like some skaters i call them they skate like old skaters they're just their jump positions are wide and it just it reminds me of old skaters so it's just a style that she used she's a beautiful skater another new face Lindsay thorngren she got She's the first alternate for the Olympic team, which I'll go into in a minute. Skates beautifully too, not like a Russian, but she just has beautiful extensions, power, speed, attempted triple axel, didn't land it, was under rotated and she fell. But still, all these girls like Alyssa Liu, Amber Glenn, now Lindsay, are getting the triple axel and help us get the Russians with their quads. So this is all really exciting and really good. Going back to the Olympic team, our skaters for the women are Maria Bell, Karen Jen, and Alyssa Liu. So that was our top three in the short it ended up being Izabu taking third for the long but again Alyssa had to withdraw because of COVID which isn't fair but now more than ever we need to focus on the alternates that we're sending which are Lindsay Thorngren, Gabriella Izzo, and Amber Glenn because skaters like Alyssa who had to withdraw with COVID if that happens at the Olympics those three girls I just listed are going to be competing so that begs the question if, let's say, everyone we send has COVID besides the alternates in every country, it's going to be an alternate Olympics. And will that be counted as a real Olympic? Or are you going to be go going down in history as the alternate Olympics? You know, the Olympics where the stars or the best of the best 
didn't really get to compete and it was just because of COVID that so and so won. So now more than ever, the alternates aren't really being counted out. You need to still train, get in the mind space, don't be sad that you didn't make the team because more than likely you might skate because of cases like Amber Glenn and Alyssa. So now that Amber Glenn is on the alternates, that was more of Amber's past history rather than what she skated at nationals because she did not do well at nationals and it was sad to see because I rooted for her. I wanted her to do really well, but because of COVID, she didn't. But now, being the third alternate, she doesn't have a great chance. We might use alternate one, hopefully not two, because we don't want to have more than one lady go down with COVID. She's going to be going, and she might have a chance to prove herself again at the Olympics, which is really cool. Not on the Olympic team, but still a great performance at nationals was Gracie Gold. She has been coming back so hard, trying to get on the podium, trying to do her best. And I'm honestly really amazed and proud of her for coming back to skating after all she's been through and getting to qualify to nationals and going to nationals. She skated an amazing short program, not so much the long, which is like really, really heartbreaking to watch. But again, she's still here and she's still fighting. And that's really amazing and something that we should all aspire to be because she really loves the sport and she's going for it. Going back to Gabriela Izzo, who is our second alternate on the Olympic team, her skating is so different and refreshing. She skates really fast and powerful. And although she didn't skate that well in the long, she did an amazing short. This time at nationals, her past track record has been great. She hits the jump, she's consistent. And I'm really excited to see her skate more later down the line. All right, let's move on to the men because although the women's was crazy with the COVID cases and the Olympic team and all that drama, the men was even crazier because of Ian Melink. And I'm sorry I'm saying that name wrong too because I'm terrible with names. Going in to the men's, I thought I knew that it was going to be, you know, the classic Nathan, Vincent, and Jason top three. Um, maybe you have Camden or Jimmy Ma in four or five, and I wasn't concerned with six and whatever. But oh my god, this kid just burst on the block, 17 years old, does qualify for the Olympics, and had the quads. Like, his Instagram name is Quad God, compared to what Nathan is called, the Quad King. So it's like, he is confident, he knows what he can do, and he is not afraid to tell everybody. He went out there, did quads, not just like a lot of quads, but like flawless, solid, you can't call it under quads. It was crazy. Again, Nathan Chen won, but it was looking a little dicey. With two falls in the long, he fell on the, on the opening jump, and then he tripped in his footwork sequence, which is kind of silly. And Marivelle did it at Skate America, like sometimes you get into the program and you just kind of like lose track of where your feet are. But for a minute there, it looked like his technical was under Ian Elon's in the box, and then he did another quad, and it was like, okay, fine. He's got the higher points. But it was crazy. And then Elon comes and gets second, so it was Nathan, Elon, Vincent Brown, or Vin Vincent Jason. I keep going between first names and last names. So that was crazy, because that was unexpected. And then we get our Olympic team named, with it, which is Nathan, Vincent, and Jason, which is what I thought the Nationals would be, which it wasn't, with Elon, Camden, and Jimmy Ma as our alternates, which again, alternates might be skating. They have a lot better chance of skating at the Olympics than they would have any other year because of COVID, because of these skaters getting COVID. Jason Brown's coach, Lori, got COVID, and I have a feeling that Jason might get COVID too pretty soon because they were just on a plane or, or just at an airport in a rental car for 30 something hours trying to get to Nashville because of this whole fiasco where Jason couldn't get from Canada to Nashville with all the airlines closing and flights delayed and he got there like the day of the competition. And it was crazy that he was just in a car for like hours with his coach. How does he not have COVID and she does, you know? So Jason Brown might be already out of the Olympics. So that's really crazy and unexpected. I loved Bima. I loved his program to down for what? A couple years ago. I think I was there for it live. I think it was a sweeper that that the Nationals. Camden, I watched him skate this year. It's really good, really impressed with him. He gave such an emotional performance. He was so proud of himself the long. I think overall we have a great team for the men and the women. But I'm just like thinking about all these alternates. Like, how many are we gonna use? Like, how many people are gonna come down with COVID? That we're gonna use the alternates. I'm gonna have enough alternates at this point. Because in the case of like Alyssa, when she got COVID, she could have infected the entire warm up group at nationals, 
which meant our top three ladies would have gotten COVID and had to withdraw. Definitely look out, definitely go watch Nationals. If you have Peacock, if you have YouTube, go watch The Men and the Ladies. I watched some of the short, I mean, I watched some of the pair and I stand because I like watching them, I just can't call it. Um, and they were pretty cool too. I stance this year, the rhythm dance, that was so cool. Like I did not know that was like that fun. Right, so go watch that if you want to. And yeah, let me know what you think about the Olympic team, about the skaters. You want me to go back in depth with like so-and-so, you want me to break down Gracie's program, break down Marty's program, Nathan's program. I will do it because I like doing this. I, <laughs> I call the programs all the time with my parents and they get really mad. They're like, Liz, stop talking. I'm trying to hear Tara. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I want to call it too. So tell me everything you think in the comments below. Leave a like, share, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. So, I mean, if one gets COVID, you would, it's safe to assume that everyone gets COVID, which means we might, which means we might be, which means we might, we,